awesome. Every day, all day. This, 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 this is how we roll. This, 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 this is 97.9. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, but you're okay. Okay, now you're moving. At first, it was buffering, but now I can see you. You good? I like your background. Okay, you, is it good? Yes, we good. We good. So, um, Genesis Blue here today. Introduce yourself and let everybody know. Just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you became part of the Own Every Piece program. Dope. So, my name is Genesis Blue, born and raised in H Town, of course. Greens Point, Acres Home, all that North Side. Don't hate, congratulate. Okay. <laughs> um, and I am a hip hop artist, uh, activist, and psychotherapist. And uh, I got involved with the Own Every Piece campaign. Um, I was invited by someone, a lady in another organization called Black Sheep Agency, and she thought, yo, your values really align with these people. You should be totally down with this organization. And I have been for like a couple of years now, and it's been really, really dope. So that's how I got involved with Own Every Piece. It's dope. And can you tell everybody what Own Every Piece stands for and what it's all about in case they never heard of the initiative? Man, it's about empowering women, right? We have a right to choose. We have a right to have a voice. And it's about amplify amplifying those voices, right? So it's not necessarily all about birth, birth control. I think some people get the idea that it's just about birth control. But it's about women's right to taking care of themselves and having their own choice to do what they want with their body and also having the information because i think for so many of us we just didn't have the information i can think being a young kid and not having any clue about sex or protection <laughs> or right. uh, or that you can or, or that you can go to a clinic and not have to have your parents there it's stuff that we don't know about and this organization makes sure you at least have the information so you can make an educated and informed decision right and it's not only just important for women too you know guys you got to look out for your, your little sisters your friends your girlfriend whatever the case may be so this is for everybody too so can you also talk to us about your upbringing and how, you know, how your experience had shaped the content for, for your music? Because I know your values is different and I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so born and raised, like I said, in Houston, Texas, on the north side in Greens Point, and then also having to live with my grandmother in Acres Home, of course, I got to see uh, basically the distinct differences of the way we get treated based on our socioeconomic status, right? With black people being the most impacted by that. So, you know, I love music. I grew up in hip hop culture, um, but it was always important for me to make sure that my music had a message just because I grew up around it. My grandmother was a big activist in Acres Home. I can remember being a little girl and she'd be like, hey, we're about to go put on your clothes. We're doing the march for war on drugs. I was just born into that, so I thought that's what everybody was doing. So, of course, when I get older and start writing music, like, I started writing music, like, at 11 or 12, and they would be tickled pink because I would be this little kid, like, talking about the man, you know, like, standing up to the man, and they're like, how do you even know about this thing? But it's because my grandmother, my grandmother instilled that upon me very young, yeah, so... That's how I got where I went. And, um, you know, I love hip hop music, so I had to do that. But then I was also big into education. So I had to get an education as well. It was very important in my family to do so. So what do you think about, you know, the current climate and the marches and the protests and stuff that are just some people, because like one of my one of my friends actually protested for George Floyd a couple of weeks ago in Houston. That was her first protest ever. She's not of color, so I get it. But, you know, all in all and still, what do you think about, you know, the current climate? Okay, the marches and the protests is sort of like a beautiful nightmare, right? We don't want to have to still, like I told you, I've been doing this since I was a little kid. So right. although we love to see it, it's like, dang, but we still got to do this. Like, we still own the same thing. So it's a beautiful mm -hmm. nightmare. Like, I love it, but obviously we're going to have to do more, right? And so to move forward, guys, 
we got to trans we got to transfer the anger into action and so that's what i want to see my people do i want to transfer that anger into action and keep it going uh so the current climate depressing as it as it is it's always been that way we're just unveiling it right and and, and seeing it for what it really is and i think it's important that people that are not black stand up 10 times harder because we're exhausted. I, are you tired? I'm tired. I don't know. And, and, and like you said, like you've been doing this your whole life. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing it my whole long. life. And there's no end in sight, right? So that can get very <laughs> dim for some people. Like, dang, I don't see an end in sight in my generation, but we're doing what we can, right? Yeah. We got to make the changes with the next generation. What do you think are some of the things that can be done to help empower women in this challenging time? I love this question because I'm all about empowering women. Um, number one, I think that men, shout out to the dudes on here, I see you, you have to do a better job standing up for us, especially, I'm sorry, I like to champion women of color, black women. You got to standing up for for us you got to start calling out your friends on their toxic behaviors you got to start calling out toxic behaviors in a work environment or a professional setting you got to call it out number one number two we have to organize together we got to get on one accord when we sometimes get off track because everybody's worried about being right instead of doing right and so I think when we learn how to do right instead of be right, we have to compromise and stand up together. That's how we're going to get our voices heard. And we have to have that consistency behind it. I love that. I feel it too. And earlier you mentioned that you had a PhD in psychotherapy. Can you just give us a little more insight and detail on that? Because, you know, mental health and all those kind of things have been such like, you know, n new topics for some people who never really thought about it until, you know, the quarantine or COVID or the current climate. So just talk to us a little more about your PhD too. Absolutely. So I am a licensed psychotherapist, and that means I do mental health every day. I have a private practice. I work at a residential treatment center, and that's what I do every day. Now, I will tell you that we are in the middle of experiencing our own trauma, right? So just because we didn't experience it firsthand, we have secondary trauma. And then people of color have generational trauma. Right? Preach, just because of preach. everything we've been through and so now more than ever take your butt to therapy we <laughs> we Thank are you. We say it louder for the people in the back <laughs> we are offering therapy virtually in person via telephone there's no reason now not to process this trauma that we're experiencing because we are we all are there's no way you can log in and see all of this sad depressing uh, frustrating news every single day and think you're going to have a normal life. You're not. You're going to experience something. And so mental health uh, is one of the most important things you'll ever do for yourself. I find it very interesting that we as people will always address our physical health and our spiritual health, right? Especially people of color. We're ready to go to church and we're ready to pray and we're ready to work <laughs> and we're ready to work out and go on the next diet. Uh, but mental health is like, ah, well, what's Why? different about that? <laughs> like, it's nothing different. And I like to tell people that human beings operate like on a three-point system. You have to have mental, physical, and spiritual health if you want to have optimum human experience, right? And so start taking care of your mental health. Go hard in the paint for that, just like you do your tummy, just like you do <laughs> your body. Like, go hard for that because it Mind matters body so much. Yes, yes. And finally, before I let you go, one last quick question. What are three tips that you would give to young women who are looking to get involved in this cause too? This is a great question. So young women need to first find your why. Don't just do stuff because everybody's doing it. You have to know your why because if you don't know your why, you're going to give up. You're going to lose steam. But that passion is your why. Like, I'm doing this because it really, really matters to me. So if it really, really matters to you, you'll stick with it. Number two, find your support system because we're going to run out of gas at some point. So we're not meant to take this journey. We're not meant to take the journey alone, right? We need to have some people behind us. Um, and thirdly, do your research when you're joining movements, organizations, you know, uh, believing in people, paying people money for why you, you do your research. Yeah, because everybody ain't for you. I'm going to tell you right now. 
exactly. so you have to do your research uh, and 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 make sure always to practice self care. Sometimes you just gotta unplug. I mean, it's been a few weeks since I posted on Instagram because sometimes I just have to go, yo. Right. It's not right now, girl. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like sometimes, sometimes I think I'm the only one. I'm like, this is just too much. Like, I don't even feel like doing this. I thought it was just information me. Like, overload. It it's information overload. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much again for tapping in. So much useful information. I'm going to make sure I post it to the page, too. And also, can you drop a, uh, your Instagram in the comments so everybody can find you and follow you, too? For sure. And while I'm doing that, I want to say shout out to you. I'm so glad that you joined the 97.9 community i've been watching since I, i've been listening since i was a kid y'all i used to be on the mad had a roll call back in the day a little kid calling in what's up who's on the mic had a screw today but i really love i really love to see the transition of the new faces it's so needed so i just want to welcome you and welcome you to our city if you're not from here Thank you so much. I'm from New Orleans, but I've been here since I was in like in elementary school. So I'm a okay. great Texas grade. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. So thank you for so sure, much. Sure. I appreciate that too. Dope. 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 And take care of yourself again. Tell them self care is the most important. Don't yep. forget about your self care. And yes. own every piece. Make sure y'all follow own every piece on Instagram too. And thank you so much again, Genesis. It was great talking to you. That's right. Peace, sis. Have a good Bye. One. Bye.